Are you a slacker or are you a go-getter? Everyone knows that people vary substantially in how hard they're willing to work, but the origin of these individual differences in the brain remains a mystery. Our question today is, is there a future out there where we can activate our motivation at the flick of a switch? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Dr. Ben Miles. Welcome to Spin Up Science, where we look at the newest scientific breakthroughs and how they may change our world. Motivation is an evolutionary mechanism that helps us get out of bed in the morning, achieve mundane tasks, or simply put, survive. Without motivation, we wouldn't eat, drink, sleep, or procreate, or otherwise maintain our species survival. It is the driving force that compels us to action. And a lack of motivation is also characteristic of some mental illnesses like depression, where sufferers can struggle with even simple tasks like getting out of bed. As a result, motivation is a major research focus as scientists try to decode what makes us tick. Back in 2006, researchers found that mice with higher dopamine levels were more willing to climb a small fence to get a food reward than those mice with lower dopamine levels. Dopamine is a type of neurotransmitter, strongly linked to reward and feelings of pleasure. Its link to motivation has been known for a really long time, but exactly how that link works is still confusing. It's not just the amount of dopamine, but it's also where that dopamine is located in the brain. Back in 2012, a brain imaging study found an individual's willingness to work hard to earn money is strongly influenced by the chemistry in three specific areas of the brain. The study was published in the Journal of Neuroscience and was performed by a team working at Vanderbilt University. The study was conducted with 25 healthy volunteers ranging in ages from 18 to 29 to determine their willingness to work for a monetary reward. The participants were asked to perform a button pushing task. Using a brain mapping technique called positron emission tomography, or PET scans for short, the researchers found that go-getters, those who were willing to work hard for awards, had a higher release of dopamine in the stratum and the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, areas of the brain known to play an important role in reward. On the other hand, slackers, those that were less willing to work hard for the reward, had high dopamine levels in another area of the brain, the anterior insula, that plays a role in emotion and risk perception. The presence of dopamine in the anterior insula came as a complete surprise to the researchers. The belief at the time was that the more dopamine a subject would produce, the stronger their reward and therefore their motivation loop would be. Dopamine in the insula causing a reduced desire to work, even when it meant to the subject earning less money, stood in stark contrast to this belief. The fact that dopamine could have opposing effects in different parts of the brains also complicates the picture of motivation for scientists or doctors looking at psychotropic medications that affect dopamine levels for the treatment of things like attention deficit disorder, depression, schizophrenia, because it calls into question where these drugs actually end up within the brain and the possibility for them to have the opposite to the intended effect. In a recent breakthrough announced just last month, in December 2021, a team of scientists from the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York claimed that they found a specific set of neurons that they could target within the insular cortex that related to motivation. That is, at least in mice, where the study was conducted. The researchers had noticed that these neurons activated when mice were doing both physical and cognitive tasks and had hypothesized that they were not assisting or influencing the mouse's ability to do the tasks, but rather the motivational drive to complete the task. They set up an experiment where mice were trained to lick water bottle spouts to receive a small sugar reward. When researchers stimulated these neurons to increase their activity, the mice began licking faster and more vigorously. When dialing down the activity of these neurons, the mice would again begin to lick more slowly. These neurons are referred to as the FESF2 neurons inside the insular cortex as they activate a gene called the FESF2, but they are also connected to other neurons within the brain. Exactly what's happening relative to that gene versus to the neurons that they're connected to isn't entirely understood yet, other than they seem to have a direct impact on motivation and task completion. They repeated these experiments with a more physical task, this time had the mice run on wheels to receive a reward, and again the mice ran faster when the neurons were stimulated and slower when this activity was dialed down. What's really interesting about this study is that once the mice reached the point of satiation, feeling full, they couldn't be further motivated to complete the task, even when the researchers dialed up the neurons again. In theory, this indicates that they were not becoming addicted to the behavior or to the reward. Once they'd had their fill of sugar water, they were satisfied. 
These findings are incredibly interesting when it comes to new therapeutic strategies for treating mental illnesses like depression that affect motivation at a large scale. And beyond that, hint at the possibility of enhancing things like human focus. Finding a way to fine tune the brain might replace drugs on the market that either lose their efficacy over time or become addictive and open up our ability to optimize our minds. The question becomes, what would you do with enhanced motivation? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to find out more. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.